Hello everyone, welcome to another lecture. Today is another important topic that we're discussing, say how to read in X-ray in orthopedics. So, all right, let's have a first look at the objectives, what we are trying to accomplish here. So we're gonna review a systematic approach to interpret orthopedic X-rays. If you go systematically and if you know how to go about it, then it's easier to understand and also easier to explain. We're going to review the language of fracture description. Okay. So reading an x-ray or a radiograph is essentially describing the anatomy of a certain structure. It's as simple as that. You need to be clear and you need to be precise about what you are describing. A fracture is described based on the findings of the physical exam and a review of the x-rays. Okay. Now routine radiological evaluation consists of angles of projection that best demonstrate the anatomy while utilizing the least amount of exposures. So the common views that we use are AP or anterior posterior and lateral view. Okay, and then we get one for each side and it's right and left. Okay, so this is primarily how the routine radiographs are labeled. Then you can also have some extra views like oblique views. Okay. Patient projection for each view is standardized throughout the world throughout the world and especially to the USA. Okay. Now when viewing the radiographs, uh, in AP and lateral views the film is always positioned on the view box with the patient position as if it's facing the viewer in an anatomical position. Okay? Uh, hands and feet are placed with fingers or toes pointing up. So that these are the stand positions. Lateral views are placed on the box in the direction that the beam traveled. They use special magnetic markers to label right and left. So this is very important. You've got to be very careful about the side which the X-ray has been done. So there are some factors which can influence the quality of X-rays. Not all the X-rays are similar. So you can have some good X-rays, some bad X-rays. Let's have a look. Okay, so first is the detail or the geometric sharpness. It can be affected by the movement. If you have a nervous patient, or if you have a patient, for example, who's suffering from Parkinsonism and who has shakes and uh, is not stable in your X-ray machine, then they can they can affect the quality of the X-rays and the detail of the X-rays. Okay. Second is di distortions. What is basically distortion? Distortion is something. Uh, that is a difference between actual imagery and the recorded image okay so you actually recorded a nice image the patient was stable but you still uh, got a distorted image because we, we could be because of for example electromagnetic radiations around and it could be because of uh, you know again some fault in the machine all right the other thing that can happen is a difference in the contrast. It is controlled by adjusting the energy of the beam, okay? Now, if you have ever seen someone take an X-ray, you would have realized that they control the amount of radiations that are put through to each X-ray that is done, and this is because the contrasts are different for different materials. Some harder materials require high amount of energy and more radiation as compared to some softer materials which require lesser amount of uh, you know extra radiation so there can be different contrast okay so just a brief outline so there are two types of bones as you already know compact bone and cancellous bone all right so the compact or the cortical bone is outer bone. It's from the outer shell, just like an egg shell. And the cancellous bone is a soft bone like an egg, the inner part of the bone, except for the marrow. Okay. All right. Now, this is the crux of the whole talk today. All right. The ABCs approach. Okay. So 
any x-ray that you're trying to read, uh, whether it's in orthopedics or some other branch, you should uh, do an ABCs approach, but for especially for orthopedics, this approach is really, really useful, okay? And before the, you do this approach, the first thing that you should do is identify the patient. So it's called a pre-ABC. Identify the patient and read the provided info. It is not uncommon to see patient x-ray being done for someone else, all right? Or it's been mislabeled. So first is to identify which patient, which person does the x-ray belong to, okay? All right, then A is for adequacy and alignment, okay? So the film has to be adequately exposed and should have been a good alignment, okay? B is for bones, all right? So is this the bone that you asked for in the x-ray? Is the whole length of the bone that you asked for in the x-ray? So these kind of things, this is bones. C is for cartilage, all right? So for example, in conditions like osteoarthritis, where you wanna see how much cartilage damage has occurred, so that's for C. And A is for soft tissues. Why is soft tissue important? Uh, the most common example would be an open fracture where you will see gas shadows in the soft tissue. So that's where soft tissues are very, very important. Another example would be in tumors. Okay, so apply the ABC's approach to every orthopedic film you evaluate. Okay, now. As I said, A is for alignment, so assess the size of bones, for example, gigantism or dwarfism, the bones may be larger or smaller. You gotta assess the number of bones, assess each bone for its normal shape and contour, okay? So you can have irregularities from trauma, congenital, developmental, or pathological. You should assess the joint position as it may change in trauma or other conditions. Bone density, again, assess the general bone density. It will be decreased in conditions like osteoporosis. Okay. And then look for sclerosis, which could be a sign of repair in the bone, as in the case of healing fractures, or some conditions, metabolic conditions can lead to increase in the bone density. Okay. Then you should look for bone lesions. So bone destroying lesions could be osteolytic as in rheumatoid arthritis or gout or some tumors, and osteoblastic, which could be bone forming, example in osteoblastomas, osteodosteomas. The next thing you should do is assess the texture abnormalities where you look at the trabeculae, all right, especially in femoral neck fractures. Okay, so as I said, the ABC is approach, so the C is for cartilage, as you can see in this image. All right, uh, image of uh, knee showing uh, arthritis of the knee. So you assess the joint space width and you assess the subchondral bone for cysts and other changes. Okay, you should also see the epiphysis, especially in kids. Okay, soft tissues, you should assess the gross size of the musculature, assess the outline of joint capsules and assess the periosteum and also you should carefully see if there are any gas shadows which could indicate an open fracture. Okay, now reading the x-rays continue. When you start reading by this approach, the first thing you should say is what anatomical structure are you looking at? Is it an elbow? Is it a forearm? Is it a wrist? Is it a tibia? Is it a femur? And how many views are there? Okay, so I would start with x-ray of Mr. XYZ of the right elbow, AP view or a lateral view, whatever it is, so something like that, okay? Condition of the soft tissue, open versus closed. As I said, the biggest indication is you see gas shadows in there. Then you should say where the fracture is. So diaphysis, metaphysis, or epiphysis. Epiphysis is the ends of the bone, and diaphysis is the shaft of the bone. And as the epiphysis goes into the diaphysis, the part is called the metaphysis. Okay, then should also indicate whether the fracture is going into the joint, so that's intra-articular, or whether it's outside the joint or extra-articular. Should also indicate whether the direction of the fracture line is a transverse, spiral, or oblique. Okay, then you should class 
classify the fracture based upon the fracture pattern. So combination uh, butterfly segment where there's an incomplete fracture, then you should comment on the deformity, okay, displacement, angulation, rotation. We'll, we'll have a look at some examples shortly and uh, these things will become more clear. Okay. Also, never forget the rule of twos, two views. So as, as we've already discussed, you should have at least two views. AP and lateral are the most common. You should have two joints in the x-ray, one below and one above. So if there's a fracture of the tibia, you should always get one joint above, so that's a knee joint, and one joint below, that's ankle joint. Two occasions. Now, this is very important. Some fractures, especially something like a scaphoid fractures, may not be visible on first series of x-rays, but you could appreciate the healing on the x-rays. So you should always get two occasions, x-rays on two occasions. Okay. So, for example, if you uh, suspect a scaphoid fracture and you can't really see and you don't really have other modalities like CT or an MRI, you could repeat the x-ray in about three to four weeks time and you, sh you could see a healing uh, which may indicate that there was a fracture to start with. So that's, that's one of the examples when you need x-rays on two occasions. Okay, Two limbs is also very important, especially in pediatric injuries where sometimes you cannot differentiate whether it's an ossification center or it's a fracture. So you gotta do an x-ray of the other limb and compare the two to see what's going on. Okay, now let's have a look at some fracture patterns. What do you think is a fracture pattern on this x-ray? It's pretty simple. Okay, so that's a transverse fracture. Okay, you can see it just goes through and through. It is usually produced by distracting or a tensile force. That's the first um, pattern that you see on the fractures. Okay, then the second one is a spiral fracture. Okay, so it's produced by a torsional force. So the fracture is, is, in, is in the form of a spiral. That's pretty self-explanatory. Okay, and the third one is a butterfly. It's a, so it's kind of a fracture where there's an extra piece. So it's described as a butterfly. It's usually produced by pure bending force. Okay, then as you can see, this kind of injury where everything is shattered and there's multiple parts so this is called as a comminuted fracture okay so where the bone is broken into many pieces so it's usually a high energy injury with combined force you see that these kind of injuries commonly with motor vehicle accidents uh, road traffic accidents okay now let's have a look at next step so that's called a displacement how do you describe the displacement okay now it is characterized by a percentage of bone contact on either view okay so you could as i said always take two views ap view and lateral view all right so the displacement or the angulate uh, then the next thing is angulation and angulation is described in terms of distal fragment relative to proximal for example in this one the distal fragment is going towards the body which is called varus it was going outwards and would be called valgus okay so it could be varus or valgus which is looking from the front or ap view or it could be anterior posterior which is looking from the side on the lateral view okay then apex of the angle is formed by the fragments where the fracture is example apex of the anterior so apex medial lateral so for example in this x-ray so the apex is going outwards lateral okay now the next thing is location where is a fracture located okay so commonly described in thirds of the affected bone for example distal third of the tibia as in this x-ray uh, example and other examples could be proximal middle third of femur and if it's at two levels you will call it as a segmental fracture okay then other location is diaphysis which is basically a shaft of the bone Okay. It could be metaphysis uh, towards the end of the bone and it could be intraarticular as in this example where it's going into the wrist joint. Okay, so now altogether, if you, I were to describe this x-ray, how would you do it? It's an oblique fracture of the femur at the middle shaft with 100% displacement medially. Okay, it's pretty simple to describe. 
Okay. Now this is for your practice. So what do you see? Try to guess. Try to guess and leave your comments below. Hope you liked our video. Thanks and keep coming back for more. Thank you for watching. Please like and share. Subscribe to our channel and watch the next video. Also comment on the videos that you like and share amongst your friends. Also please do visit at mathmanvideos.com for detailed lectures and more notes. Thank you. Please keep coming back.